Alrighty, everybody, today what we're going to be talking about is base plate design. Okay. And if you don't know what a base plate is, at the bottom of your column, you will have a plate, and the plate is there to distribute the load onto your foundation. Okay? And um, let's see. Just to kind of want to talk about some, some, some stuff here that, that's shown. Um, to note, this is from the AIC manual, uh, page 14-4, as you may want to reference. Now, here you, you have is the base plate that will be welded, and it would typically come with the column, um, like in my experience, like 99.999% of the time, these two will become connected. Um, and there will be grout in here, and the question is, well, why does there have to be grout in it? And the reason for that is they have something called leveling nuts um, here. And for, like, actual structural columns, not this is not, like, a column for, like, I don't know, like a, a small little sign or something like that, right? They may not go with a grout, and they may. But we're talking about real building columns to make sure that everything is nice and flat and straight. Um, they have these nuts below that they would adjust to either move up or down so that it is nice and level and that gives you the ability to adjust and once that's set ideally you want to go ahead and grout and close it up if not and i've seen this where some places they don't even put the grout they just have it sitting on the uh, leveling nuts right there um, and so i guess the only issue is that if you have a lot of loads like let's just say on a multi-building Let's say you have like, say, you know, multi-stories, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six-story building. And at the bottom of your, your um, column, you have the base plate. And let's just say that the leveling nut was there. What ends up happening is that the rod is actually acting like a column, right? And all the load is going there. Here's your leveling nuts if we were to kind of look at it in more detail. Here's your base plate, right? And here's your concrete foundation. And the in-between potentially gets filled with grout, and you'll have another one on the other side, and typically you'll have four bolts. And if you were to think of this and have like a uh, enormous amount of load, this has a potential to buckle, okay? So that is a possibility. So prior to adding so much load on like a multi-story building, the idea should be that you go ahead and grout it, um, um, prior to adding more load to the structure, okay? Now, with that, you have the anchor rods that goes in, and um, typically you'll go about 12 inches minimum um, into the foundation. That's just kind of a rule of thumb, just normal practice. The one thing I wanted to clarify is that this example is only when the gravity loads are centered, concentric, or a gravity column, and it has no moment, okay? If you have a moment, then you need to go to the AISC design guide. I believe it's number one, and that will talk about different conditions to do with moment. And within that design guide, like, they have something where it's a small moment or a large moment. And the difference is that if we have a concentric load, the distribution under the base plate is constant throughout, right? The same magnitude. If you apply a moment, that means that this will start to um, distribute and have more load. And I believe now they're doing it through strength methods, so you're going to have a linear um, distribution at the, at the end point. Um, you would actually have something like this instead. Okay. So um, that's out of this discussion. Uh, and finally, um, there's a third way of doing it where you actually do a finite element analysis. You can mesh the base plate. Um, there are softwares that can do it for you, um, but that's kind of outside of the AIC um, analysis or um, design. So, um, and here what you're doing is um, they're welding. Uh, whoops, they're welding the um, the uh, the column to the base plate. Okay. And this 
essentially equations over here. Let's see. And this equation right here, let's see, no, not x. But I guess I'm missing the equation in here, but I will write it down and reference it as we go through the example. Um, I, and so um, this section, which is J9.1, uh, talks about the concrete bearing, okay? And the difference between this equation and this equation is that if you have a column, the base plate, that sits on a um, decent foundation that, you know, it's going out of the page, then you're just going to go with this one, okay? The only time that you're going to go with this one is when you um, have a column sitting on a um, pedestal. So what that means is that you've got like a concrete pedestal, then you have a foundation, and then you've got the base plate that's like right there. And then the column is coming down on it right there, right? So that's that's most likely gonna be this condition, right? Our focus is just gonna be like this. Um, at least for me, like I would say 95% of the time, uh, my design is typically gonna have this. It's rare that I would have this um, unless I have a really low drop foundation or something like that, um, okay? So we're going to go over an example and really be discussing um, the different type of, or actually how to solve for this, okay? And we'll go ahead and get started right here. Now, the design load that we will be going over will be, and let's see, uh, we will use um, 690 kips as our PU. And we will choose a column size of a W12 by 96. And I wanted to note as, as we're choosing the column size, typically your column size will be a W12 by, um, a W10 by, a W14 by. And usually columns, in general, their dimension for both the depth and a flange, when it comes to column size, you know, the heavier size, they're, they're typically about the same, okay? In other words, you're not going to have a, a, a typical column um, where this is, say, like, say, three, uh, four inches, <clears throat> and then this is, say, um, uh, 12 inches, right? That, that ratio typically for columns are off, and uh, column size typically means that it's like stocky. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> and so what I typically do is that I will get some of the information, right? So for example, the BF right here is equal to 12.2. Okay, and the D is equal to 12.7. So it kind of so, uh, is, is kind of confirming what I was kind of telling you. Okay, what I'll usually do at, at this point is I would actually start sizing the base plate at like now, right? So what I typically will do is I'll go usually three inches. Okay, so what that means is that if I got 12.7, 12.2, um, what I would like to do is say that I would like to add, um, I'll put the anchor bolt right here, the anchor bolt right here, and um, it, it's outside of this discussion, but understand that there is a minimum clearance that you want to kind of maintain. So um, the iron workers can go and um, get a tool to crank this on. So in other words, if this bolt was right next to here, um, they wouldn't be able to get the tool to um, tighten it, right? Also keep in mind that there's actually welds here. 
So if you have a decent sized fillet weld, you don't want the bolt. Uh, it's not just the um, the anchor rod, but it's also the 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 nut that will also kind of get in the way. So just kind of consider that. So at the end of the day, what I typically do is I add three inches on each end. So um, in, in this case, what I would do is, um, so if my size right now is a 12 by 12, what I typically would do is just go ahead and add um, three inches and, and, and two ends. So, or six inches total. So let's just kind of round up to say, let's just say 14 inches for fun, make a nice even um, size, 14 inches. And I'll add six inches, which is three, a minimum of three from there to there on each end. And so the next question is, well, why don't I just go 10 inches and kind of be done with it? You may have to um, if you don't have enough bearing area, uh, but usually this is kind of a good starting point. So then what I'll end up doing is say that this is, um, say, 20 inches. So I'll go with a base plate size of a 20 by 20 inch, okay? So that's my base plate side that I'm gonna I'm gonna be starting with, and the point would be to design for the thickness of it. Okay. Now we want to check the bearing area first to ensure that uh, there's no crushing of the concrete below. So all you really have to do is just take the general um, bearing area below. So I would say the A. Of the plate would be 220 times 20, which is equal to 400 um, inches squared. And you want to check that against the concrete bearing. And if you can recall what that was, if not, we'll go back here, right, is PN, uh, which is 0.85. The weird stuff is that you would think that they would have the phi factor kind of in here already. So phi is equal to 0 0.65. Um, so we'll, what we say is that we, we got to check to make sure that the concrete doesn't crush. So the equation for that is phi PN, the concrete, which is 0 0.65, 0 0.85, and F prime C. And in, in this case, we'll choose a... Um, 3,000 PSI concrete. It's pretty common to go with three to 4,000 PSI. Okay. And, oh, what I'm missing is the area below. So, okay, in inches. Now, again, if it was a pilaster, then we would go uh, with the, um, our pedestal, we'd go with the other equation. So, if I was to go ahead and calculate this, this would be 0 0.65, 0 0.85 times 3,000 times and 400 times. So this has a capacity of 663 kips, okay? And that should be greater than your PU equal to 690. Oh, crap. Oh, that's no good. <laughs> All right. Base plate. 22 by 22. Again, and we're trying to figure out how many inches it is, right? All right, so that kind of keeps the mass um, pretty, pretty simple. All right, so what, what do we do next? Well, we know what, um, what base plate we're going to be using, right? And we know what the bearing pressure is because it's essentially going to just be P over divided by area and all that. Now, what you're going to be looking for, okay, is that if we look right over here, there's a couple of things that are happening. And, and you could see it kind of drawn in really lightly right here. This right here is what they call the theoretical yield line 
right there. So with the load, they say that the plate can um, potentially start to cantilever from here and go up, or start from here and start to cantilever and go up, okay? Alternately, um, there is some kind of kind of portion right here where this may be, I don't know exactly where it is, to be honest, but the point is that it has a theoretical yield line where this portion of it will kind of start to, uh, to, it might be probably closer to this point like this, and, and, and this point will start to yield, right? So uh, if I was to kind of draw what that kind of looks like right here, You have a large load right here. So this, if the theoretical yield line, in this case, is right here, which is right at the, almost like the middle of the flange, right, is that this will start to bend like that, right? So if you look at this, it's regular statics, where, um, in this case, the concrete's pushing it up, right? And, and so, you would have a max moment. Uh, it's upside down, but um, the idea is that your your moment is maximum at this point, which is maximum at this point, which is kind of like that cantilever um, that is kind of being shown. Speed curve. So you're checking: is it is this part kind of bending? Is this part kind of bending, or is it kind of like the hypotenuse diagonal kind of bending. And those are really the three checks that you're going to be doing to find out what the longest length is because the load is uh, pounds per inch and it's constant throughout, so it doesn't really change. So what's going to be governing is whatever the longest length is, right? So with that, you're going to determine the longest length based on uh, these three requirements right here. And that's what we're going to be doing next. All right, so M is equal to N minus 0.95 D, and N is, we really need to uh, see the, right here, oh, the N um, refers to, and, and in our case, it's 22. Let's uh, kind of erase all this stuff. N um, is equal to 22 inches. The B is equal to 22 inches. Okay. And then we also have that the BF is equal to 12.2 inches. And D is equal to 12.7 inches. And so when we were kind of looking at those equations, maybe it'd be smarter that we just kind of drop it in here. We have it right next to us. We know that M and go back to blue. Is equal to n minus 0 0.95 d over 2. n is equal to b minus 0 0.8 bf over it's 2. Right, and finally. The N, I mean, sorry, the N prime, which is that kind of, uh, you know, yield line that I was talking about, is dB over 4. Okay, and um, really what they're trying to do is just say that, hey, here's a, here's a total length, right? Let's uh, take out that much, and let's just look at what this length is right here. So this M is that M. Um, this 
n is that n, right? So um, if we were to go ahead and solve for this, we'll get what the first one is. Um, 4.97, okay, n, he is 22, yeah, 6.12, and n prime, okay, is going to be db, um, the two dimensions, square root divided by 4, which is 3.11. Remember, the one that you want is going to be the longest length because that's going to be, you can't really remember. So in this case, the 6.12 is uh, going to be the governing one. Okay, now there, there's a little kind of a, a, a cheater's thing that I kind of did right now. I want to kind of explain that is that really what you're supposed to be comparing it to is the lambda n prime. And it's always going to be less, it, sorry, it cannot exceed more than one. So you can conservatively assume that it is one. If not, then you can go ahead and use this. And what it could do is it could potentially reduce your cantilever length. Um, it's dependent on your load and um, of what the column and the capacity because of it. Now, I, I'm being lazy because even if I did that, it's not going to govern. Right, so I totally skipped that sentence. Um, but if you see that your n prime is say like say 6.5 or something, right? Let's just say this was really 6.5. And when we look at this, it's like, well, this is fairly close. And let's just say your lambda came in and reduced that to 6.0, all of a sudden this would start to govern, right? So uh, that's how I kind of approach it. So we would just be looking at these three and say, which is the longest length that we would be kind of considering. Okay, the equation that I didn't get to screenshot um, into coming in here is going to be the equation that's on page, um, I'm going to have to remember, 6.12. So the length that governs is going to be 6.12. Okay, so we're going to go with the fact that this governs, and it's 6.12. If you go to the code of um, the, the manual of 14-6, page 14-6, there's an equation. An equation is um, EQN. Uh, I promise you it's there. 14-7A. What the equation is going to have is T min, okay, which is a minimum thickness of the base plate, is equal to L um, square root P u, or 2pu, divided by 0 0.9 fy b n. Okay? We're not going to talk about how this equation is derived and all that stuff. At the end of the day, it's just like um, backwards calculating the zx of a section. So, um, we noted that our length, your length is a maximum of your m comma n comma lambda n prime, right? And we found that the governing one was this one, so that's 6.12. So we'll put 6.12 here. Square root 2 pu, I think we said that that was um, roughly 690, I think. Um, I have to go check. I, I can't remember. Yeah, 690. So 690. Okay. Uh, 0 0.9. FY in this case will go with 36 KSI. Okay, you can go 50 also, but not 36. It is BNM. Remember, it was 22 inches times 22 inches, the base plate dimension. Alrighty. So what do that? What does this give us? All right.
Let me make sure it's that's correct. So just need to And what I get is 1.81 inches. So that's the thickness of the plate. Um, bottom line is uh, you increment in like quarters. So this is 1.75. So you'll go, you'll say two inches, two inches. So your plate size is going to be uh, two inches, uh, two inches thick um, by um, 22 inches by 22 inches. Forgot. I feel so bad. This is a prop, more proper way of writing that. Um, and so it's a two-inch thick base plate, right? So what that looks like as your column coming down right here. Um, This right here, we're saying that it's going to be two inches, and that's what it's. And, and uh, we know that this is a square dimension right here, and that's 22 inches. And you know this is kind of 3D, right? I'm like not an artist, so if we were trying to, and then, you know, this would be centered, right, obviously, but the idea is that that's the 22 inch dimension. Yeah, I should have kind of brought it out and centered it more, but um, hopefully you get the idea of that. Okay. Um, one thing to note, um, AIC recommends, unless they change the recommendation again, that if it's a load bearing for a, uh, for like a building, minimum thickness, T min, the recommendation is three quarter inch. Right. Again, if this is like a little small little sign or whatever, you, you can go less. But the recommendation is going to be three quarter inch. Um, what other recommendations are there? Minimum is four bolts. Four bolts. Okay. Unless it's a really light load, then you can get away with two bolts. But the minimum, and I, I think it kind of ties in with, with some OSHA safety stuff. But you go with four bolts. Just just do it four. Okay. Don't argue. You can go with more. Um, typically, you'll only go with more if you start to have moments and the um, bolt starts to pull up and all that stuff. That's a whole different design example. It's a whole different um, time. So this really kind of bothers me right here. So what if I can kind of bring that right there? It's more uh, centered there. And then your, your anchor bolts will be back there and those would kind of pull up in there. So, and yeah, anyways, not a good 3D drawing, okay? So that concludes uh, base plate design. So in summary, let's kind of start from the beginning. And what you're doing is first trying to get all your dimensions. Uh, you're going to check it against the concrete to make sure oh, this is not the concrete equation, but this is concrete occasion, right? Um, if you got a case on or maybe even a pilaster, then you're going to use this equation. But if you got full bearing all over, then you go ahead and use this, okay? And um, from there, you would just go ahead and try to see what the, the longest cantilever length is. And finally, you're going to put into the equation, the one I didn't get the screenshot, but it would be right there. That's your equation for it. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Have a good one.